Ooh. Oh. 25 hours. 5 E's. 3500 milliamp hours. Ooh, 3200 milliamp hours. 26 F's. Guys, let's talk about testing batteries. As you guys know, building a battery pack, a DI power wall, is comprised of two main activities, right? One is acquiring batteries and testing them, and then the other one is to actually build, design, and build the battery pack itself, right? So, primarily because a community, we have been uh, dealing with used, recycled, harvested cells, it means that the process of acquiring uh, and actually testing the cells has become a much bigger, in my opinion, a much bigger thing than the actual building of the battery pack. And so as a result of that, it prevents a lot of people from getting into the activity of building battery packs, right? So today I wanna to talk to you about testing procedures, but not on used cells. I wanna show you how to test brand new cells so that you can test a small sample of a larger batch of batteries so that you can start using them. As you know, our PCB-based uh, uh, DIY Powerwall project is moving along very well. There's a lot of you guys that are building projects with this one and it really the best way to do this would actually be to use brand new cells because then it, it allows you to just test a few of them right and then once you trust the source now you know you have a good quality cell then you pop it in here and then you'd be done in no time. So let me show you how I'm going about testing uh, a batch of cells from China to be able to tell them if they're good quality or if they're like fakes, like, you know, a lot of them are. First, if you're not familiar with our DIY PCV based uh, DIY Powerwall project, uh, look at this video right here. It's still in beta. We still haven't completely finished the design, but there are thousands of those already being used to start Powerwall projects. So that's the reason why we're going to need large amounts of batteries, right? And that's why I'm looking at new batteries. So let's start talking about where these batteries came from. A couple of months ago, I decided that to, in order to take this DIY Powerwall movement to the next level would be to start using new cells, right? The problem is that China's plagued with a bunch of fake cells, a bunch of like deceiving sellers, and so finding a good source of cells, it was going to be hard. A few months ago, I started testing the Lidocala cells uh, because that is a uh, familiar brand to us as we use their testers to test all the U cells that we've been using for the last couple of years. Unfortunately, they turn out to be a bunch of fake cells, right? They do perform in some ways. Commonly, they would hit their like capacity marks at like low power levels, but then when you put at higher power levels that they would fall short and they wouldn't. And then the whole thing about them being deceitful and trying to sell their batteries, not as, you know, just a Chinese batteries from some factory or even self-brand them as Light Ocala. Instead, what they're doing is they're selling, you know, cells that look like other brands. They're looking like... Actually, I have been proven wrong even before uploading this video. It turns out Light Ocala does sell Lidocala branded cells, but that still doesn't change the fact that, well, I order a bunch and a lot of them seem to be fake. So it's hard to tell which ones are which, but there does seem to be some evidence to support the fact that they, they maybe do sell genuine cells with the little sticker on there, right? But I think once you see where I'm going with this, uh, you'll see that this is not as important as a point. So let's go back to the video. Let's do this. Like Panasonic cells, like, you know, uh, Samsung cells. And then all they do is they stick their little Lidocala sticker on top. So unfortunately, Lidocala is not a manufacturer of cells. And so they're kind of a middleman, right? I don't know. I don't even know if they make their chargers themselves. They might be just a brand that slaps their name on, on an OEM product from somewhere else. At least, at least when it comes to the cells, it seems like that is the case. Well, as a result of that, I did not want to endorse uh, batteries from the company Light of Color. So the search kept going. Uh, I put it out there online that I was looking for that. And eventually someone that has been to China, that has been vetting uh, 
companies or manufacturers and factories in China came forward and they proposed the thing. I said, yes, I'm looking for batteries. Uh, this is our specs that I want. And in no time, I had a bunch of boxes. I got $4,000 worth of batteries to test out and play and see if I liked them or not. And so let me tell you how I went about the process of testing these. Uh, a lot of people will say that you're gonna need you know, specialized equipment, that you're gonna need high quality, very accurate equipment. I don't think that is the case. I, I think you can use regular uh, char you know, RC chargers, right? That are, you know, higher in quality than the cheapest ones that you can get, but you definitely do not need like scientific uh, grade equipment to be able to test them, right? So, God, when is this guy gonna actually show us the test? He just keeps talking on forever. First, there's a lot of people who think they can tell if a battery cell is genuine by just its physical characteristics. Now, I do not believe this is the case because there isn't really an official way that a cell needs to look like. There's a lot of conflicting opinions online about what that is, but the reality is that it's all speculative. People believe that only cells that look like cells they've used before and have been proven to be genuine are genuine, but the truth is that manufacturers can change the color of the wrappers anytime they want. They can change the button top style and they wouldn't ask us permission or they wouldn't announce it to us. So we could potentially be rejecting genuine cells just because they look different than we expect them to. So a much better way to tell if a cell is genuine is by actually testing its performance against that of a published spec sheet. So I have five different cells to compare to their data sheet specifications. First, we have the Samsung INR18650-35E, the Samsung INR18650-25R, an LG 18650 one Samsung ICR18650-26F, and finally, I have an OEM Chinese cell. The testing procedure is simple. First, you look at the data sheet. The 35E has a minimum of 3,350 milliamp hours. Using our Sandflur tester set at 500 milliamps, a NOR test, which stands for normal test, you cycle them once. This test is going to be using 10 cells and averaging the numbers to help read out the inaccuracies of our non-scientific grade equipment. And here we are. These are the 10 cell numbers. So the average capacity of these 10 cells is 3,649 milliamp hours, which is above the minimum of 3,350 milliamp hours. The internal resistance averaged out to about 23 milliohms, so that is actually pretty low too. So now let's move on to the max load test and see how they do there. All right, the load test happens here at this power lab, six touch. Uh, the cell is loaded onto this holder here, which is uh, one of those types that it's used for testing cells. It's got two different types of leads, one to charge and discharge and another one for sensing, right? So basically it eliminates any resistance. So it's a much more accurate reading of the voltage. And here is where you would set the uh, parameters, right? This cell, for example, we're gonna load it up to eight amps, right? That's the load. And the minimum voltage is 265. Yeah. There we go, 265, 1S, balance. Then you click that button there. Check in the pack, boom, there we go. So this cell is not as charged, so we'll have to charge this cell uh, before we can start discharging it. To check the temperature, we're just using an iPhone, uh, using one of these thermal cameras, and then that's what's going to read the actual temperature. So we use the same 10 cells to do this load test and here are the numbers. Now the spec sheet specifies that on a eight amp load, the cell should be at 92% capacity, 92% of 3350. According to Google, that is 3082 milliamp hours. So our average capacity of 3274 milliamp hours, is actually above average. On the temperature side, all the cells average out at 64 degrees Celsius. 
which is about four degrees higher than the data sheet specifies. So they're running a little bit hot, but they are so close to the target of 60 degrees that I'm just gonna call it within spec. So there you go, these cells appear to be genuine as their uh, performance pretty much aligns with that with the public specification sheet. Let's move on to the next cell. Next is the very popular 25R cell. The average capacity looks good. The average internal resistance seems high, but I suspect cell number eight has something to do with that. On the power side, things get a bit more interesting. You see the spec sheet says 70 degrees at 20 amp load, but my cells did 100 Cs. I cross-checked cells from four other sources and I also got 100 degrees. Are all these fake 25 hours? Then looking at the data sheet from Samsung, it shows a graph with temperatures at 20 amp, close to 100 degrees. So I decided to compare test results at the 15 amp level. Capacity at 15 amp tests should be 97% of 2,376 milliamp hours. So these cells check out. Temperature average out to three degrees deviation from the data sheet numbers. It's really weird that Samsung has conflicting temperature numbers within their published documents, but these cells seem to check out. Next is the LG MH1 cell. This cell is supposed to have a capacity no lower than 3100 milliamp hours, but they average slightly less than that. Internal resistance is supposed to be 40 milliohms, and they test at an average of 68 milliohms. It is possible the difference is due to the fact that they check internal resistance using an AC pulse, while my equipment uses a DC one. But at the lower levels, it's not looking very good for these cells. Moving on to the high power tests, at a 10 amp load, they average 2,636 milliamp hours. But unfortunately, the spec sheet does not specify what they're supposed to yield at this load level. So I have to rely on comparing my results with tests done by someone else. Like this graph, made by lightinfo.dk, shows that at 10 amp loads, they get around 2850 milliamp hours, or about 200 milliamp hours higher than these cells tested at. At this point, these cells have failed to hit all of the targets, not by much, but enough to raise concerns. After contacting the suppliers, it was revealed that these cells are two years old and they have been improperly stored at a very cold location. And that is the reason for the degradation. As they stand, they are not grade A cells and should not be sold as such. This shows that our simple tests are very effective at picking any anomalies. Up next is the Samsung ICR 18650-26F cell. At an average capacity of 2,772 milliamp hours, it clearly meets the minimum capacity of 2550. The internal resistance also looks good. On the top end, the capacity looks good and the temperature is dead on. This is another genuine cell. So finally, we get to our OEM Chinese cell. The first batch I got did not have any markings printed on it. So I did the half amp test and got an average of 2,994 milliamp hours and a very respectable internal resistance of 25 milliohms. Not knowing the upper limits of this cell, I did a five amp load test and capacity came down to 2,645 milliamp hours at around 50 degrees. That is better performance than the 26F cell but let's see how it performs at higher loads. At 7.8 amps, they average 2,630 milliamp hours at 63 degrees. And at 10 amps, they average 2,574 milliamp hours at 70 degrees Celsius. Wow, this is a solid 10 amp continuous 2,600 milliamp hour cell that costs about a dollar less than the Samsung 26F. That makes a very compelling cell. So there you go. Our little tests were able to pick the battery cell that had problems, it was problematic. And so we we're gonna be able to reject that cell because it doesn't meet the uh, published specs, right? But for the rest of them, they're pretty compelling cells, right? Uh, by the way, if you're interested in getting some of these cells, I am working 
with a company that will import these into the United States and offer us a good price. These are all very, very good cells, but in specific, I like the OEM cell because the cost to performance ratio is way better than any of the branded cells, right? So I like this cell so much that I wanna make this cell our official uh, cell for our you know, DIY PCB-based uh, Powerwall project. And as such, I wanna do a group buy. But for that, you'll have to click on this video where I'll give you more details and I'll give you the links where you can go and start you know, putting an order so that we can get the best price and we can import these into the United States and then we can uh, all have cells. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you find it at the very least entertaining. If you'd like to see more, you know, do the usual, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we also have a Facebook group. You can click on the link right here where we're developing all kinds of projects. So a lot of you will find it useful. So with that said, thank you for watching the video once again and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.